What's up all my purple bears out there? Professor Hurley here bringing you another episode of Purple Bear Biology. In this video, we are going to explore the basics of our endocrine system. This system has a dynamic impact on how our bodies maintain homeostasis and is one of my personal favorites because of the hormone pathways as well as how fluctuations influence overall health. I want to focus our conversation for now on just the broader view of our endocrine system and get a big picture look at what the system is as well as how it operates. But never fear, the more detailed episodes are near, and we are going to get to explore many hormones in depth and even some of the associated disease pathologies when the hormones are imbalanced. I'm super excited about what is to come, so let's jump right in so we can get there. First, let me start off by pointing out the awesomeness that the endocrine system has tissues located throughout the body that secrete hormones. Some of these tissues, like the pituitary gland and the thyroid gland, are primary organs whose function is to serve as hormone secretors. But one of the neat things is, is that there are also secondary hormone secreting tissues throughout the body, like the heart and the kidneys, whose primary roles are outside of the endocrine system's function. Nevertheless, they release hormones that regulate vital homeostatic functions. Hormones travel from secreting tissues to the target cells using our circulatory system. Diffusion of hormones down their concentration gradient will gain them access into capillaries, and then they flow with the blood back to the heart. From there, the hormones can gain access to the rest of the body. This enables our endocrine system to actively communicate and regulate tissues throughout our entire bodies. Now, if you were just thinking to yourself, wait, I thought that the nervous system did all of this too, and I thought it did it really fast. Why do we need the endocrine system? You would be absolutely correct that the nervous system plays an indescribably important role in monitoring and regulating homeostasis. But where neurological impulses tend to be localized and short-lived, our endocrine system excels at having more prolonged effects. Make no mistake about it though, the two systems are intimately connected and help regulate each other's functions. Neurons from all over the body will deliver information to glands to trigger hormone secretion, thus recruiting in the endocrine system for homeostatic adjustment. Additionally, the posterior portion of the pituitary gland is actually a neurological extension of the hypothalamus and serves as a storage site for hormones to be released. These neuroendocrine connections are pivotal to maintaining homeostasis, and we will get to discuss more about this hypothalamic pituitary relationship in the near future. Okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. We've been talking about hormones this and hormones that. You may be wondering, what is a hormone? Well, hormones are a chemical structure primarily built from amino acids or cholesterols. Those built from amino acids tend to be water soluble and travel through the bloodstream relatively easy. While those steroid hormones are built from cholesterols and are hydrophobic, Thus, they need a protein to help transport them to their target cells. But, as an added bonus, these hormones survive longer in the body because of their protein buddy system. Both types of hormones play an integral role in metabolism growth and development. Modifications to concentrations or tissue response can have devastating implications. We will discuss more about both of the depicted diseases in the future. But for now, you can get a sense of the impact of the hormones of the target tissues in the images at the top on the left and right, as well as the symptoms of imbalances in the images below. So that's all well and good, but you may be wondering, how does a hormone actually work, and why would it matter to us? Hormones must bind with receptors to signal a change in a cell. While the mechanism of initiating cellular response is slightly different depending on whether or not the hormone is our steroid friend with their protein travel buddy or the free-floating amino acid composite. The primary principle is the same in both, though. The target cell must have a receptor that matches the hormone to trigger a response. With that said, keep in mind that some hormones can actually bind to more than one receptor type 
and many hormones bind to the same receptor found on multiple cells through diverse tissue types. They can even bind to different receptors on the same tissue types. For example, epinephrine can bind to cells with alpha receptors or beta receptors in our blood vessel tissue. Binding to alpha receptors results in blood vessels constricting, while binding to beta receptors will cause them to dilate. Why in the world would our body have the same hormone produce opposite effects? It's all about that location, location, location. Where hormones get taken after being released can impact what type of response we see in the tissues. Releasing epinephrine and transporting it near alpha receptors in our intestines would reduce blood flow to, the, to digestion, while transporting it near beta receptors in our skeletal muscle would increase blood flow to the muscles to enable our fight or flight response. Okay, so we get it. Hormones get released. They travel through the blood, bind to receptors on cells along the way, and trigger cellular responses. So what kind of response typically happens? I mean, like, what happens once the cell gets activated? Yeah, the answer to that is a lot of things. But one of the primary things that can happen is that one hormone can cause another hormone to get released from endocrine tissue. In fact, one hormone can stimulate the release of a hormone from a separate tissue that will then release another hormone. Hormone cascades are very common in endocrine hormone pathways. Hormones that cause the releasal of another hormone is called inception. Wait, no, tropin. Hormones that cause the release of another hormone are called tropic hormones. We will talk about a lot of different tropic hormones and learn several of their cascades. Clinically knowing which hormone is elevated can be diagnostic in helping identify which tissue is misbehaving. Increasing or decreasing metabolism, enzyme breakdown, cellular division, and osmotic balance are all common results of targeted hormones. Though regulation of all those effects is vital to our survival, we do not necessarily want the hormones to continue to be present and active once homeostasis is restored. Hormones will eventually break down and need to be filtered out of the blood. How fast that occurs depends on the hormone. Some hormones are cleared from the body within hours, while others can be around for days bound up to their carrier proteins. All right, let's bring it all together. In this episode, we discussed how our endocrine system utilizes chemicals called hormones to stimulate cellular responses. In conjunction with the nervous system, this system is able to maintain homeostasis. We also discussed the diversity found in hormone structure, as well as how fluctuations can impact health. Our next episode will start our exploration of some specific hormones and the hypothalamus pituitary relationship. It is complicated and cool. I look forward to discussing it with you. If you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to the channel and join the rest of us purple bears out there. Don't forget to also explore the other videos currently available too. As always, thank you all for watching and see y'all next time.